What makes a dunk guy? What makes a dunk guy? Yeah. A dunk guy? Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Um, okay. What makes a dunk guy? Let's, so these are that's how the questions are gonna go. やっぱりダンク最初のデザインコンセプト自体もバスケットボールシュー。They introduced it to skate, and the skaters were buying them, and the sneakerheads were buying them. Like the main thing that was like agreed on throughout is that it needed to be skateboard specific. Like the artists that were doing the SB were, were sick, and that that just opened like street art and like the culture. It was just this anomaly that nobody really could wrap their heads around. Kids, like this is their razor ramp. To be honest with you guys, <laughs> I'm just fronting for the video. Yeah. Got it, dude. You guys got to see this. This photo was in 2002. That was the first. I was wearing actually the the first colorway that Nike did for me. You know what? I think the early days of Nike was pretty awesome, man. Nike were like, hey, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this long term. They had like a technical initiative. They were very receptive, almost like spongy and everything, like the information that the skaters were giving. The dunk sole was like, here was the dunk sole, and then all the skate shoes were like, poof. So like the skate shoes had like an inch on both sides. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Basically, they were just like bread loafs. And then you saw the dunk, and it was just this tighter fitting shoe. And I think that just was kind of like game changing for me. I was like, I, I I like looking at skateboard tricks in these shoes on my feet. No more like shoes in your backpack that you're chilling after you're skating. I did that for years. Now it's like, <laughs> these are my chill shoes, these are my skate shoes, I don't have any other shoes. I initially got a call from Robbie, um, and he told me that Nike was starting skateboarding, and they, uh, we're starting with the dunk. What Nike had tried to do at the time, was it called a choke or a chode or something like that, a chode? <laughs> I mean, I had, I had trepidation. I sat down with them and I had my like protective suit on about skateboarding and like, hey, what do you think you're doing? You're, you know, you're, you, if you're coming into skateboarding, you're coming through me, you yeah, know? He was hardball. <laughs> he was playing hardball with me. My philosophy was like, okay, let's get the, the skater skater. I want to take Nike underground, back door, and come up on the other side skaters that are respected amongst the community like you know these two Gino and, and Supa and they're not the, the flavor of the month skater so that was the first four having like the diversified team like street skaters but they weren't like like over exploited like skater skaters kind of guys it just was just right the Nike program that was like music to my ears I was like yeah dude I'm down like I don't have any question about it. I remember skating all kinds of different dunks during that era. Like, I was just hyped. Gino and Reese and Richie, like, like three, like, super ill skaters, so I was, I was happy to be there. They were, like, pick a color, and I was, like, always down for the mixed colors, you know, like, nice and bright and stuff. So, some of my friends looked at the shoe, and they was like, oh, that's looking like a clown shoe. And I was like, all right, whatever, but a lot of people, like, took to it and they, they liked it, so you know, I guess it, it did really well. Oh, here are the originals. Wow, there we go, dude. 
when he's like, hey, we're gonna do a colorway. The way I picked this shoe was, uh, I was on tour in 94, and uh, there was like these tennis classics on sale. And they were all white shoes with this color stripe. And I skated in these Nikes before anyone had Nikes skating. And I was like, these were the best shoes ever. So it was nostalgic for me and right. at that time in 2002, because it reminded me of when I first wore my first Nikes. The inspiration I had for the Wheat Dunk, I wanted to make something that looked like a construction boot, but I wanted to have something that, that was like camel color that looked good with jeans. And that was basically really the most simplest way I could put it. It was just cool to see him skate. Nikes, you know, obviously Nike was kind of a new company into skating at that time, and other people started getting on. I was like, well, this is actually really sick. Nike's actually doing skating. Seeing those big Nikes with the straps out, you know, it was always rad seeing that. I don't think about the shoe necessarily for the, the way it looks at a spot, more the way it would feel. I feel like it would have been with Nike a little over 10 years, so it could have been 2004 or five, something like that. I remember that period, people were just going crazy for dunks, you know? I would just skate in all the weird colors that I got, and I remember walking on 8th Street and like sneaker junkies just tripping, like, damn fool, you're skating in that? Like, yeah, man, life's too short to be sitting you know, having all these crazy shoes, collecting cobwebs in my closet, so, yes. I got brought on a Nike team, um, it's, it must have been 12 years ago. We would just get boxes sent to our house, but I was never a, a sneaker free. For me, they were just skate shoes, so I just skated all of those shoes, yeah. which I shouldn't have done, but... <laughs> Rod was my favorite skater, you know, growing up. When he left S to get on Nike, I remember that being a big thing for me. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Your first ad was in Supreme Dunks. I just remember you needed an ad. Was it that shoe you were supposed to be in? No, no, no. They just sent me a bunch of stuff, and I just picked it. That's just what I was skating in that day. <laughs> yeah. That ad. It was a long time ago, so details are hazy. Let's see what we can find here. How do you even know where to start? I've been through all these cabinets so many times. I keep a file on everyone. Ask you for any photo, you'll know what drawer to look at. Totally. <laughs> when did you get on, Mike? Oh four, but they couldn't announce me. I think until oh five. There's this dunks. Right There's dunks in that right there. Yeah, this is all you. That's really old. Yeah, two thousand three, dude. Eighteen. Wow. There it is. You found it. The Holy Grail. The Supreme Dunks. Dude, I gotta get, I gotta come here and like... Just soak it in, dude. Eric, dude, uh, get down here. <laughs> What's your favorite dunk? The, the day, day with the fucking lenticular sort of... Oh, yeah, like, crazy, like... The, what, is, what do you call, you call that? Hologram? Hologram, hologram, yeah. Hologram. Yeah. hologram. Yeah. I really like Richards. Mm -hmm. Molders, a lot just because how clean it was. The Dodger colorway, and also Reese's. Just the fact that I still have it. I have that pair. I mean, just seeing what the dunk did for retail to me is crazy. I mean, it changed the whole scope of oh. skate shops. None of this would have been possible without a sneaker culture scene that was, you know, forming in Los Angeles and the, the major cities at the time. Once SB happened, like. That was the game changer because it put all of the focus on the dunk. Yeah, the shop, I remember shop owners would just be tripping. They did not have a clue of what hit them. Yeah. You know, there's lines in front of my store. They're like, what? and then the kids would just be like, uh, you know, just jonesing for the new, you know, Reese Forb dunk. I opened Huff in 2002. 
We opened the store with some of the original SB ones. Kids found out we had them and we would just get calls and we get kids like knocking on the door asking for them. And we were just like, you know, we didn't know what to expect. We were, we were brand new at retail. We were brand new at this business. And um, you could tell there was a demand. The skaters were buying them and the sneakerheads were buying them. So it was just like, for a store, it was like a double whammy. People in LA wanted what they couldn't get. Nike SB came in. I mean, that's when the craze started. So then they killed you with the colors, you know, like the Michigan dunk, the Syracuse dunk, Baltimore, Chicago had a dunk, New York had a dunk. I think LA even had a dunk, you know? We weren't really skating them, kids were rocking them. You know, it wasn't skaters coming in, it was kids from the hood, kids who represented culture, kids who were into hip hop, punk, whatever it may be. Nike SB is kind of what got the whole collaboration game going crazy. the original Dunk SBs from Supreme, that like took it to another level. People were lining up for 24 hours to get them. It was in the middle of winter, it was freezing, and they were sleeping in like tents, cardboard boxes, however they can keep, keep warm. And you know, I, I, I was with a bunch of friends and we just kicked it, ended up getting our pairs. You know, we got up and we went and skated. That was our thing. Like these dudes came, camped out, waited in line and that was their thing. I mean, it was pretty chaotic. You know, I remember one, when one head came in and he was like a, a nine or a 10 and he had a 12. And I don't know if you remember this, and he had stuffed socks in his shoes. Those are moments that you're just like, all right, man, like, it's your thing. I remember uh, skating the pigeon dunk here. Like, I had no clue they were, uh... <laughs> I had no clue they were so expensive, you know? So I, I, started, I was like, ah, oh, cool, mellow color shoe, you know? I started skating him and uh, I'm in line at the, at the airport like, a couple days later. It was a hole in the, in the shoe already. Some Japanese guy behind me, he, he tapped me on the shoulder. He was like, he pointed to my shoes. I was like, what are you, what are you doing? He was like, the, he got angry at me for like ruining the shoes. Like I got home and I look on the internet and they were, they, they went for, uh, for a lot of money. <laughs> I had no clue. There's guys who just generally love sneakers. I love sneakers. I've been buying sneakers all my life. I have about 1,300 pairs of shoes in my closet. And actually not my closet, my, uh, my living room and my dining room that I've turned into my sneaker closet. Absolutely. <laughs> Tokyo is really the city that the real deal original sneakerheads were. You know, that's where they came from. In the 80s, 90s, and the 2000s, no one was as hardcore as the guys out in Tokyo. Japan, especially on your first trip, it's crazy. It's like streetwear on crack, just sneakers and t-shirts and hats and brands you never heard of and colorways you never saw before. Tokyo had this store called Chapter owned by this gentleman named Homeo. And real talk, Homeo is like one of my idols. You know, a lot of people probably don't even know who this guy is, but he is definitely the first guy in the world to have shops without Nike accounts, without any kind of accounts. Well, but he was just buying everything from all over the world because it was a regional situation. So whenever you'd open up a Japanese magazine, he's the reason why you'd see every single thing was available on their wall. So that was just like a dream, like for a guy like me, you know? Okay, yeah, my name is Homio. Like uh, yeah, I'm doing today a uh, sneaker business yeah, uh, more than yeah, 20 years, you know? Sneaker culture is really, really you know, interesting. The dunk, you know, SV, you know? Yeah, you can see, you know? Yeah, we have a lot of the, you know, like, I sell to a lot of the dunk, you know. Like six times or seven times a year, you know, I'm going to the U.S., you know. Sometimes go to the, you know, Hong Kong, Philippines, you know, like collecting the shoes. Like in Philippines, uh, Nike shoes, yeah, sell to the grocery store. They were sent out like soldiers to like go to every foot action and they knew release dates, they knew the colorways, they knew it all. So yeah, uh, yeah, this went to my passion, you know. You know, like a gift color. Yeah, you know, like a this box. Yeah, we cannot find today anymore, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, this one is good, you know. Yeah, my memory, you know. Okay. I was introduced to Tomio, and we sat down, and he just told me what he was doing. Traveling the world, just buying everybody's inventory. Nike always had this regional program where like Japan, Paris, London would have its own set of kicks, like their, their color dunk. Like the main thing that was like agreed on throughout is that it needed to be skateboard specific. Something that sort of set it apart from just being a Nike shoe. Came up with this kickflip challenge. It was just like a, if you can do a kickflip outside in your new shoes, we'll give you a fiver back. The original ones had a map that was the store and the route to South Bank. When the slam dunk came out, it kind of blew my mind a little bit, and I was like, oh, that's really, that's really cool, like, realising that skating in London can go further into the world. It was really like when the, the dunk started, you know, getting special, you know, when people started working on them, creating special colorways, that's really what, what kicked it off for what SB is today. I think, you know, I'm sort of proud to have, of being there at that time, right at the beginning. And if you look now, every major fashion house has a sneaker. So the idea was like, let's just do something which nobody would expect. Let's fuck with all the materials we possibly can and let's do a pink sneaker. <laughs> and make it kind of quite, you know, quite garish in many ways. And I suppose, you know, this is the sneaker. What's interesting is you've got you know, you've got so many different um, fabrics going on. You've got your kind of leather, you've got your suede, you've got your laminate kind of style. You've got a lot going on with, 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 with the uh, production here. And then also with the record that was coming out was Never Neverland, which was the second uncle record. And there were these new characters. So there's like Futura characters printed. It was. It's pretty, it was quite a bold statement at the time. And then it became the Dunkel, which I don't even know, I don't even know who came up with that title. I've got a feeling it was just, I don't know if, who, in, who came up with it, whoever did it was a great title, but it was just a kind of, in a weird, weird way, it was a kind of joke, I think. It was like, you know, oh, you've done the Uncle Dunk? It's the Dunkel, you know. Like the artists that were doing the SB were sick and that that just opened like street art and like the culture and like just seeing everything what they did you know kind of changed my life to like what, I, what I'm doing now. I started a brand based on everything I you know didn't like about streetwear. There's nothing to do in Vegas so I would just be on the internet all day and so I just like trolled the shit out of Nike Talk learning about just like the street culture, you know, street art, street wear, was from Nike talking that message board. Still to this day, I don't care about anything, but like, I think people got jobs and created a whole new industry and new brands just from that message board. And I think it's just because of that shoe. Like a shoe can just change the life, you know? That's why I'm in this car. Shit's lit. Yeah, the dunk means everything. Once I uh, first got on Nike, that was like all I skated. Especially the lows. I never skated highs or mids ever in my life. What made me want to skate dunks was Louis Marnell, man. Miss my dog. He just made them look so good and just the way he would just rock them. Like the whole color pattern or whatever it was. He always had some dope ones on. And every video part, just like the dopest colorways. And uh, yeah, man, we all miss him. Dunks, it's just like an all natural shoe. It's been around forever, it won't ever go nowhere. And now, I know you collect dunks, you can sell them probably for like eBay for a couple grand. It's just trippy to see that, but uh, shit, now I know. But I don't really collect no dunks. Whatever I get, I skate it for the most part, besides my Jordans. That's probably like the only thing I do say. Damn, try to do it for the cops. I know when the dunk came out, it was with the times and everything, but you know, when this Dunk Elite project came along and they're wanting to slim it down and 
you know, make it a little more modern, I guess. A little more sleek. Uh, I was really psyched. These shoes, you know, when you slim shoes down, I feel like you have more control over what you want to do. Yeah, the dunk looks cool. That's pretty much it. Oh, little pup. Dogs are cool. Oh. See, I haven't seen these yet. This is the first time for these. They're pretty tight. The big differential, the very, very huge differential, is that a skateboarder will most likely get them and skate them. Sneakerhead won't. But like save them or I don't know what they do with them. Do they like save them till they die or do they like do they sell them eventually? I don't get it. I don't know. Let's see how they work. They work. They're perfect. Best shoes ever made. Hearing it first. Or actually hearing it last. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying, but whatever. No. Ask me some questions, I don't know. <laughs> okay, the reveal. The reveal is on. Nice and dark. Super reveal. <laughs>